The crime seemed almost too bizarre. While out on his nightly walk with his dog, Johnny Matos was robbed at gunpoint. The thief wanted Bugsy, Johnny's one-year-old French bulldog. You're thinking, no, this, this really can't be happening. Not here in Florida that they're going to be out here robbing you for a dog. And then he drew the gun on me and told me he would pop me if I didn't give over my dog. Johnny handed over Bugsy and called 911. The deputies arrived on scene and then they started the, the search for him. But what seemed like an isolated crime turned into a six-month investigation, leading detectives into a disturbing world of puppy trafficking and a gruesome discovery in East Orange County. Two days after Bugsy was taken, Detective Mike Pierce of the Night Violent Crime Squad was assigned the case. It's kind of unique. I was like, why are people's dogs getting stolen? These French Bulldogs, they're worth a lot of money. And unlike a car or unlike a credit card, they're very hard to track down. Meanwhile, the case was generating widespread coverage. A lot of the public started to respond and tips started coming in. Detective Pierce was able to follow up on some of the leads. Without having those tips, I don't know if we'd have a lot to go on. We threw away nothing. We kept his bowl, kept all his sweaters. We were patient, praying, worried, very worried at times. Always had hope, always. And then the break Pierce needed. A tip came in that two men, Ronnie Baker and Quantavius Williams, were suspected of stealing multiple dogs on the west side of Florida. These two same suspects had broken into pet stores, taken high-end dogs to, to essentially breed them and make money. At least one of the stolen dogs was taken to this home in East Orange County. Inside this shed, detectives say a person known as Dog Man, who would later be arrested and identified as Bobby Rivera, would cut out the original microchips and replace them with blank ones. Basically, there was an operating room. There was a table covered with dried up blood where you could see where they're cutting the dogs open. So they couldn't be identified later on to where they came back and their rightful owner. There's multiple dogs stuffed in one cage. There's, you know, feces, urine. You see that just, you know, pisses you off. But Bugsy was nowhere to be found. The investigation led back to Ronnie Baker and Quantavius Williams, and a Facebook page connected them to someone who knew where to find Bugsy. Like, this guy definitely knows where Bugsy is. We loaded up in a car and started heading to a location. Nearly six months after he was taken, Bugsy oh. was finally found. That's him. Bugsy's microchip was never removed. A scan proved it was him. It was a good feeling to finally have Bugsy back. Hey, Bugsy. Hey, Bugsy. How you doing, buddy? It was time to take Bugsy home. Hi. Hi. I have someone for you. Hi. <laughs> Johnny was in California celebrating his 50th birthday. His son called him to share the good news. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me cry on camera. Don't make me cry on camera. It was... It was amazing. It was really amazing to get him on. We have people out there that are sticking a gun in someone's face and taking their animals. So if they're capable of that, you know, we're concerned uh, about the safety of our residents. We want to get that person off the street ASAP. Sounds funny, but it might be the most rewarding case I've, I've ever worked. I don't think I've ever worked anything necessarily this big. To be able to do this and have a positive outcome, it's extremely rewarding. Dogs are just precious. You know, they're, they're just so giving. They don't want anything but to just be pet and loved. It's great to have them home. It really is. It really is good to have them home.